Recently, it's become very popular for people to take their cars to a dyno shop uh, for various reasons, primarily to see the highest power that the car makes. And uh, we thought it'd be interesting to share some tips that we've learned over the years about having a successful dyno shop mission. So starting with the very basics, when we talk about the dyno, we're talking about what's called a dynamometer. And a chassis dyno is a device that is either mobile or it's built into the ground that has rollers. And these rollers put resistance on the drive wheels of the vehicle. And you power the car up and put it in gear and spin the rollers with the car. And the computer system measures the amount of power the car makes based on the resistance on the rollers. So that's what the dyno is. Um, and there's a bunch of different uses for the dyno. First and foremost, everybody thinks of is how much power does my car make? Uh, sometimes bragging rights, sometimes trying to sell it, sometimes trying to confirm that the stuff you bought actually made a difference. Uh, the other thing is tuning. Um, a dyno takes a lot of variables out of driving the car. Uh, you don't have to watch for traffic, you don't have to obey the speed limit. You can run the car as hard as you need to and pay attention to what's important. Um, your O2 readings, your oil pressure, your engine temperature, without having to worry about anything else. Like I said, normally it's equated with measuring peak horsepower, but when we build a car here at the V8 Speed and Resto Shop, a lot of times we're doing a complete restoration where this car came down to you know, absolutely nothing and was rebuilt with all new parts. Uh, in fact, like the, the uh, ZR9 Camaro we recently built, every piece of that car was brand new. The engine was brand new from Mass Motorsports, the body came from Classic Industries, the suspension was from Detroit Speed, so none of these pieces had ever been assembled together until we built this car. And when you build a car from nothing, you have a, a bunch of variables. Um, do the brakes work? Does the steering work? In addition to, does the engine work? So a lot of times we will take a freshly completed car or a car that's halfway through the build process and put it together and take it to the dyno shop where we can effectively drive it on the rollers without having to worry about steering it and monitoring the oil pressure gauge while we're driving. So we eliminate the variables of brakes not working properly and a proper alignment and, and all that other stuff. And we can focus on the engine and driveline performance alone. So it makes it a little bit easier to kind of break in a car on the dyno. It's a lot safer anyway. Another thing that we like to do is measure temperatures of the transmission, the universal joints, the bearings and the brakes on the dyno to see if anything's bound up. I mean, if you have a caliper, a bearing that gets real hot, it's easy to check that on the dyno as opposed to driving around on the street. A lot safer to do that too. Another advantage of a chassis dyno is that most of them have a function that simulates the road force of driving the car down the road. So you can now evaluate and tune things like part throttle acceleration, uh, the cruising air fuel ratio, as well as measuring full maximum horsepower at wide open throttle. And those are things that an engine dyno stand just can't do. So a chassis dyno is a very valuable tool, which means the time on the dyno can get expensive. Uh, most of these shops charge either by the hour or by a half day or by a full day. So in order to get the best value for that session, we put together a list of some tips uh, to help you out to make sure that when you get there, you're doing what you came for and you're not bogged down by other simple little problems. So we're actually gonna put this list on our website at v8speedshop.com. You'll see a, uh, a link to the Dino Shop checklist where you can download a free copy. We've got more tips for your Dino trip when V8 TV returns.